Yo, what's going on E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video. And in this one, I want to talk about the season that was the World Arena Contention season. We often joke as a community about how every content creator says that the most recent season of World Arena is the worst season. I am telling you personally, from my experience of years of competitive gaming, that I think that this one, Contention Season, without a doubt, is the worst one in Epic 7 history. Normally, this is the video that is my account review for the Emperor Season. I saw no real reason for me to attempt an Emperor Climb, or even like the pipe dream that is a Legend Climb, for two reasons. And those are ban protection and the game's overall balance right now. So I want to talk about them in this video. And if you still want me to do an account review and show you what I got from just messing around in Champion, I can absolutely make a video for that. Just let me know down in the comment section below. But for this video, I want to again talk about ban protection and game balance. I really, really didn't like ban protection when it was first shown. And now that I've played with it for a whole season, I super do not like it. It makes the game worse overall for two major reasons. Number one, it massively reduces the game's skill cap. And two, it creates incredibly unfun or at times frustrating game feel. And this is present obviously at the highest levels of play. I've seen other content creators say it only affects high levels, doesn't really affect low levels. It also affects the lowest levels of gameplay as well. So let's talk about skill cap first. When we talk about competitive play in Epic Seven, I personally think it is defined by three things. Number one, understanding and countering metagames. Basically, knowing what people consider to be the most effective tactics available, AKA meta, and how to play around those things. Number two, reducing the overall variance in the game. This is essentially mitigating your RNG risk. Right? Or in like another video game terms, for example, we have like option selects to cover multiple angles or like fuzzy guarding and fighting games. Competitive players are always looking to reduce the overall variance in the game to get the expected outcome, which is the W. Number three, making good decisions. Since E7 is a turn-based game, skill expression doesn't apply here like it would in other games like fighting games or even first-person shooters. What does apply is your ability to read your opponent and the lines of play that you have available to you, weigh those options on the fly in a limited amount of time, and execute what you think gives you the best chance to win. This starts in the draft phase with your pre-bans and also your post-ban decisions. It carries over into the game by choosing the correct decisions which deny your opponent most of their actions and reduce your team's overall risk to RNG. Think of things like do you S2 with Payra to get Restrict, even if it means risking an Elbrus Ritual Sword AoE counter from Navy Captain Landy? Things like that. Now let's talk about those same three things, which are, you know, understanding metagaming, reducing variance, and making good decisions. Let's talk about all three of those things in the context of ban protection. Number one, metagaming. One of the problems I identified when ban protection was first shown is the issue of game balance, which we'll talk about that whole subject after these three points. E7 requires you to have specific units at the ready to counter specific problems. Otherwise, you gotta ban the problem or just accept that you're gonna lose the game. Let's say, for example, we take a character like Fumir. Maybe Fumir's only real counterplay, if you're slow, is Dragon King Sharoon because she counters sleep. Or if you don't have that, you gotta ban Fumir. In the current season, you don't have that option to ban Fumir. So, in that case, you better have that specific ML5, or you're just dead to that draft. And even then, what if the Fumir just banned Sharoon? What if the only out to the comp is pre-ban? Based on whether or not you have first or second pick in this meta, you might just have zero options to fight specific drafts. First pick, more often than not, can just put you in scenarios like this, especially with heroes like New Moon Luna. It feels absolutely miserable to play against at almost every level of play. The game simply just, in my opinion, doesn't have enough tools in the pool for the player base at large to deal with the type of gameplay 
that ban protection provides. Number two, reducing variance in the game. Simply put, you can't ban Navy Captain Landy if they just put it under ban protection. There's just always going to be some percentage of games where she counters every attack or salvos every time or just the bind on your Nequal gets 15%. As a competitive player, you just have to take and accept that. In a card game like Magic the Gathering, this happens all the time. It's built into the game with its land system. But Magic has matches that are best of three or five in a competitive environment. The better player usually wins that set since the extra game helps reduce variance in the overall match. In best of one, which is what Epic Seven's World Arena Ladder is, by the way, it feels like trash. Best of one already has high variance in every other competitive game because those formats lend towards very aggressive or gimmicky strategies that can random out players that generally should win the match. By introducing a mechanic where the opponent can guarantee the cornerstone of their gimmick or just a character like Landy that can introduce a massive amount of variance to any game she's in inherently makes the game feel more luck-based than skill-based and there's no way for you to get around it. For anyone who is seeking to improve themselves and actually learn this game, knowing that the latter just has a lot of drafts that you lose against because you got unlucky, that's a horrible feeling. In the past, you could at least sidestep some of that stuff with proper post bans. Number three, making good decisions. Perhaps the most egregious problem with ban protection piggybacks off of what we were just talking about, post bans. If you watched my old World Arena guide from when I first started this YouTube channel, you know how much I placed a heavy emphasis on drafting win conditions. Those being characters that can carry the game for you and win it. For some examples, you obviously have DPS heroes like Navy Captain Landy, but Ambitious Tywin with a stun lock on the enemy team by using his Soul Burn, that can be a win condition for you. Or Laia with her skill three, killing everybody if the game goes long enough, that can be your win condition. If you only draft one win condition in previous seasons, smart opponents can punish it by banning that one win con, making it impossible for you to pick up the W. With ban protection, you need to only draft one condition in the third slot, which allows the rest of the draft to just hyper enable that one win con. Overall, the draft is super dumbed down because the player's ability to counterplay versus bad drafts is drastically reduced. And this isn't just the case with only win cons. If a cleave player didn't fear any of your anti-cleave characters in the past, they could just ban your tank that had Arius. If control players see you only have one cleanser, they just ban it and you lose. If your team needs turn one to function, an opponent might ban your only fast character. But they can't do that now. Just take a look at Cleave at the end of the contention season. They need to only put Bloodblade Corrin or Eternal Wanderer Ludwig underneath Ban Protect, and then they're free to just dedicate the rest of their draft to countering all of their opponent's counter picks. I mean, it's not like Standard is going to pick BBK or Eternal Wanderer Ludwig, right? So they have no fear of the high priority picks being taken from them. Essentially, Ban Protection allows you to play the game incredibly sloppy and incredibly greedy and get away with it more often than not which is the opposite of what at least i'd expect out of a competitive game you should be able to punish your opponent's mistakes not just have to accept it because there's no way for you to counter it at all it feels awful so now let's talk about game balance with that whole conversation that whole framework in mind at the highest level of play you need only to have a roster of about maybe say 8 to 12 characters to get legend under this new system. You just lock in the same three in any order every single game and have a small pool of units to flex and counter your opponent's core first three or their last two picks. This is again why Cleave was so strong at the end of the season. You don't really need anything other than to secure turn one with your first two picks. Then you can just dedicate your whole draft to like say maybe a bunch of AOE defense breaks, and that guarantees you a win. The turn two, I want to end legend draft that usually consists of Laia and maybe two knights or like DDR and a knight. That's all guaranteed under this system if you want it. It makes the game incredibly brain dead at the highest level. 
At the lowest levels of play, though, I would argue it is even worse. Players below champion already don't have incredible gear, and they usually have a very limited roster of units. They can't be expected to have Dragon King Sharoon, Blood Moon Haste, New Moon Luna, Dragon Bride Senya, a limited unit like Laia, or specific collab heroes like Edward Elric. Helping the 10 or so players in my Discord get Masters this season, it became incredibly apparent to me that the average Epic Seven player simply does not have the roster capable of dealing with all of the units that have either been released, buffed, or reworked over the last year. A Death Dealer Ray underneath a ban protection was basically an automatic loss for a good chunk of my audience unless Green Selene was somehow available and we could stick her underneath a ban protect. Having your opponent take Blood Moon Haste and Dragon Bride Senya together when you don't own New Moon Luna or Death Dealer Ray or Nequal or Urban Shadow Shoe, that was just an automatic top right, automatic loss. We just went to the next game. This past season, I helped coach and give advice to several people on my Discord server to try to help them get the Lionheart Sermia skin this season. And the advice I gave usually came down to one of four things. Number one, let's put Death Deal Array underneath the ban protection because, well, the average player doesn't have a non-limited RGB answer to it besides Green Selene. If she's banned or we've already taken her, well, there's nothing they could really do about it. The only other good answers are Moonlights. And yes, I'm counting Moon Bunny Dominion as a Moonlight. Yes, she's not a five and is a lot more common, but there are people, believe it or not, who go years without seeing a specific Moonlight four star. Personally, it took me four years to get my first copy of Assassin Kartuha. Number two, pick Laia as your first pick and just put Nequal under ban protection because again, it's something that the player race can't deal with and it's backed up by a limited unit that not everyone actually has access to. Number three, just put Navy Captain Landy underneath ban protection and just hope you get counters and dual attacks. Eventually, we'll win enough games that we get the skin. Number four, they were just someone who happened to have a ton of speed gear laying around and we could make a 300 plus speed opener and put it under ban protection because, well, again, lower level players can't outspeed it and most of the time can't really deal with it. By the way, most of the time, that character was Conqueror Lilius, which is also a Moonlight 5 star. Notice how every single one of those examples was facilitated by ban protection. Notice how almost all of them are abusing recently released, buffed, or reworked overpowered units and just capitalizing on the general populace's inability to actually do something about fighting those characters. After it was all said and done, I just thought to myself, how the hell is any player with a year or less experience in Epic 7 supposed to be able to play World Arena? What if they're watching the E7 WC 2024 and they want to get into the game? I don't know how you do it. And honestly, it got me pretty upset because if new players can't actually compete in the game, then the game is just going to keep declining. And a declining game doesn't really last a long time looking at some of my guildmates and friends who've recently flocked to summoner's war after how bad they felt this season was it's really hard to not look at that game and be envious that game doesn't have ban protection that game gets regular nerfs when heroes are overpowered their balance patches are way larger than our games and as far as it was explained to me, if you're new to that game, they give you a slew of staple counterpick units that are fully geared and ready to go so you could just jump in and not feel like you're super behind at lower ranks. Epic 7 is supposed to be the anime version of Summoner's War. Epic 7 is supposed to be the game with the 10-year plan. Summoner's War is in year 11, and it feels like it's doing everything right, while Anime Summoner's War feels like it stumbled so hard when it comes to PvP lately. When it was first pitched, 
Spam protection seemed like it was going to be a potential answer to solve the game's PvP balance issues. It was supposed to make for a better gameplay experience. With a whole season behind us now, I feel like I can confidently say it does not make for a good gameplay experience, especially for the average casual Epic 7 player, which by the way, is the bulk of this game's audience. I have often said in every game I've done content for, that the casual player is the lifeblood of that game. The game should not 100% be catered towards the casual player, but they are the majority. So the majority of your decisions should be based on helping them. I really hope Smogate and Super Creative take a good, hard look at the current state of PvP after the E7 World Championship and consider making huge changes to how PvP works in the future. With how many of my friends and guildmates are currently resigning from the game, as well as how many of my viewers are leaving the game to go to other gotchas out there, something has to change. I really just don't think that the game's PvP can keep going down this road. I've been talking with the community managers from time to time over the past few weeks. I've been venting my frustrations to them about the current state of Epic 7. About how I wish I could change so many things. And I know other content creators are just as frustrated and have expressed similar sentiments to them. The only response that I've ever gotten back, and it seems to be the only response others have gotten back is, well, if you want change, then you need to show us an overwhelming amount of support with numbers to back it up so we can show the dev team. Basically, you need the community to have a united front, like how we were when we opposed Awakened Potential. That's the only way you'll ever get actual real change in this game. Things like removing ban protection, having things nerfed if you think they're overpowered in World Arena. Linked in this video's description, you will find a survey that Tristan drew up that talks about ban protection and the current state of PvP. While it doesn't specifically handle the subject of potentially nerfing OP units, there should be an option to express that if you would like to do so. If you want actual change in this game's PvP, I think this survey may be your best avenue to fight for it. So please, I implore you, if you've made it this far in the video, share the link to that survey with your friends, your guildmates, and any social media platform that you can where E7 players lurk. Again, if we don't have a united front, a united community with a huge amount of support, nothing in Epic 7 will change. A game that doesn't change is not something that I want, and I'm sure it is not something that you watching this video, if you are an enfranchised player, want. But maybe I'm just completely off basis. So please let me know your thoughts on anything we discussed in this video down in the comment section below. As always, I would love to hear from you. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.